Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. I know that a lot of you have issues with your lazy columns. It's a very common problem that lazy columns are laggy, that they feel kind of sluggish, and it's not a very smooth experience for the user. And in this video, I want to show you three things you can do to make your lazy columns run smoothly again. And before we get started, it's actually important that you always test the release build of your apps. So if you experience lag in your lazy columns in the debug build, which you automatically launch in Android Studio, then that doesn't automatically imply that the lag is also there in the release build for your actual user base. Because you must know that in the debug build, there are a lot of extra debug tools which Android Studio attaches to your process, which will of course slow down the performance of your app in order to make these debug tools work. So one example would be the layout inspector, which will also use in this video, which tracks which composables recomposed how often. But of course, if there is something that consistently looks at your UI and tracks what recomposed, then that is something that simply costs performance and might make your lazy column run slower. So I will do everything here in the debug build, but if you encounter lag problems in your lazy columns, definitely try it out on the release build first and see if it is actually a real issue. And only then it makes sense to optimize it. So I prepared a little lazy column here, which uh, looks like common lazy columns look like. Some pictures, some titles, here some tags. Uh, and if we scroll, you will notice, okay, it's, uh, it's kind of laggy. It's not really, not a really fluent experience here. And in this video, we will optimize this and take a look at what we can actually do and which things we actually need to check if there is room for optimization. And if you actually want to optimize along, then you can also clone the initial code of my repo here. So you have the same code as I do. So the first and most dangerous issue for lags in lazy columns are images. Because if each of your lazy columns entries contains an image, you need to be aware that Compose will need to load this image as you scroll. And in that case, it will of course be laggy and slow if these images are too large. So for optimizing lazy column lag, you get the biggest leverage out of optimizing your images if you use some in these. In this case, these are images from a real camera. So they are quite large. And of course, intentionally it chose images that were that were really large. So the lag really gets prominent even on a modern device. But I also already prepared images that are slower. So we have our pick one JPEG here and we have our pig one compressed here. You can see, yeah, you, you see that it's a little bit compressed, but it's still a fine quality. And if we take a look in the top right here, you can see this image is roughly 300 kilobytes large, and this image is 13 megabytes large. So we get a really big performance and memory boost here by compressing our images while not sacrificing a lot of quality. Of course, you could also uh, consider com compressing it a little bit less to preserve some more quality but uh, usually this is what you get the biggest performance boost from. So in our main activity, let's just swap out some of these uh, resource IDs. Let's say we have uh, compressed resource IDs. We just pass our pick one compressed, pick two compressed, three and four. And these compressed resource IDs are then used to construct this random list of images with a random title and some random text. If we relaunch this, Take a look here, and then you will notice that this will already fix most of our issues. So now we have a very, very fluent scrolling experience here because we use smaller images and not that many images or not that many bytes need to be loaded into memory. So that is definitely always the first thing you should check if you have a laggy or lazy column. I will, of course, also get into two things which aren't related to images here. If you have images, optimize these first. And that also means that if you maybe load images from a URL or from somewhere else where you maybe read some bytes or so, then definitely use an appropriate caching library, something like Coil for JPEG Compose, because that library will make sure that your images are properly cached and that, for example, the same image does not get loaded twice from disk if you show it twice in your lazy column. Okay, but let's take a look at what else we can do to optimize our lazy column performance. And for that, we need to take a look into this image details composable, which I've built, which is really just one entry here in our list. It consists of a card, and then it shows our image on top, a little bit of spacing, our title, and then a flow row for all tags. So it just shows all of our tags for that image in a row. And what you can now do is you can take a look at your lazy column, which displays these image details composables. And this might be a little bit more known thing or more known optimization you can make. The third one is actually not so well known, so definitely watch that as well. But this one here is really easy, and that is that we should use keys in our lazy column. So keys are pretty much a unique identifier of each item, which the lazy column can then use that if the, if the list actually changed. So 
the images list here, that it only needs to recompose items that really changed. And we can do this by simply having a key function here. And in this key function, we then get a reference to this image. And based on this image, we, can, we, we then need to tell our lazy column what is really unique about a specific image. And if we take a look at our my image composable, uh, my image data class here, then let's think about what is really unique about an image. Right now, um, the resource ID isn't because multiple images could contain the same resource ID. The title, yeah, the same for the title actually, because uh, multiple images could contain the same title and the same for the text. So right now, there isn't anything unique about such an uh, my image instance. So we need to add something that is unique, and that would very prominently be just a normal ID. So we have an ID of type string, for example, and we set that to UUID random UUID dot two string. So whenever we create an instance of this my image class, we just generate a random ID for it, which then serves as the unique identifier for it. And very often, if you just show some entries that maybe come from an API or a local database, then you already have this uh, unique identifier, then you already have an ID. But also, if you already have some other types of attributes which are definitely unique, so let's say um, the title of an image would always be unique and multiple images couldn't have the same title, then that is also something you can use as the key. So now that we added an ID, which also gets automatically created when we create an instance of my image, we can go ahead in this key function of our lazy column and actually return this ID here. So we say that is definitely what is unique about an image. And if our underlying images list now changes, because maybe one more image gets added to that list, then all the other images which were already in that list will still be in that list. And Compose will see, okay, all these IDs of these images which were in the list before are still in the list, so I don't need to recompose these. So Compose will only add the new item to the list, will only uh, recompose the new item, but not all the other ones. If you have a long list, that is definitely a performance improvement I would always make because it's, it's really a no-brainer. You don't spend a lot of time on that and it also doesn't bring any uh, major disadvantages. Another cool side effect of that is that you can also easily add uh, list animations because Compose knows which items change, and then you can also yeah, just animate these changed items. So far, so good, but I also said that the third optimization is one that not so many people know about. And for that, to show you what the issue is, I want to launch this app. Take a look here, well, it's actually already launched, um, but here it is. And if we now take a look in our layout inspector, where we can see which composables of our Compose UI actually recompose, we can do this here by clicking on this little um, three dots and then opening the layout inspector. That is basically a tool in Android Studio where we can attach something actually to our device, which we launched this on. And that will now show our Compose UI. Um, let's actually leave it like that. And here we also see our Compose UI tree. Um, so what this actually consists of for some reason, this is not the right one, I think, because it doesn't show the Compose stuff, the Compose view. Um, okay, that's kind of weird that it shows these details. Okay, now after relaunching this, it actually shows our Compose UI. Um, I don't know what was the issue here, but here we see our lazy column and all the currently composed image details composables. And what now happens if we scroll very fast? Then sometimes you should see Yes, there it is. You should see some red flashes. It's quite unpredictable, but there it is again. And these red flashes indicate that the corresponding composables actually recomposed during scrolling. But here in this case, there's actually no reason for these to recompose because we just scroll a list that doesn't change. And in terms of a list of images, recomposing can also mean that the image gets reloaded. And loading an image is, of course, a quite expensive operation. So what is the root cause of these unnecessary recompositions? The root cause is that if we take a look in our My Image data class, that the Compose compiler cannot automatically mark this class as stable. So stability and immutability is a concept that helps the Compose compiler to optimize recompositions. And to a big part, it already tries to mark classes as stable by default, but sometimes it fails to do that. And I actually made a very detailed video about that um, just a few days ago. So if you want to dive deeper into this concept, then uh, click somewhere up here to watch that video. 
please after this video. But the issue in this case is that we have a, a tags list here and Compose doesn't know if this list is really an immutable list or if it can change under the hood. So what Compose will do is it will mark this class as unstable since Compose can't confidently tell about when this class changed and that can just lead to unnecessary recomposition. But if we as developers know that we won't mutate this tags list under the hood and we won't pass a mutable list here. And we can also tell the Compose compiler that by marking this class as stable or immutable. If we mark it as immutable, that's even stronger um, and allows for more optimizations. But that really means that we as developers accept kind of a contract with this class and with the Compose compiler that an instance of this class will never change. And if we change it, then we replace the whole instance. So we maybe create a new instance of this class uh, with the copy function. But this immutable annotation or the stable annotation just helps the Compose compiler to optimize these recompositions and to avoid unnecessary recompositions if we have such a class which is not stable by default because it might contain a data type which is yeah not stable by default, like a list, for example. And if we now relaunch this, and take a look on our device, actually also take a look on the layout inspector, wait until that's attached and actually scroll very fast again, then it's quite laggy here in the inspector. That is, um, I should definitely always test this in the release build since now the debug tools are of course attached, um, but it should still work. I'm currently scrolling really fast. Um, it, could, it should still work to see this afterwards here in our compose tree. Um, right now it didn't show yet what I wanted to show. Let's scroll some more. It's super laggy here. I'll also show you what I'm currently doing. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if it, it will show what I want to show. Um, let's maybe wait for a little moment so it can actually process all these UI events. Yes, now after some short wait, you can actually see that none of these composables of these image details were recomposed because the recompose count, which this column is for, is zero for all of these. And this column, which means that these were skipped, counts how often these were skipped. So some were skipped 16 times, which otherwise would have been recomposed 16 times if we wouldn't have this immutable or stable annotation. So this really now helps the Compose compiler to, to optimize these recompositions to avoid unnecessary recompositions. I actually can't tell why this helps to optimize recompositions in, in this specific case and why these actually happened in the first place, but they definitely did happen, which you just saw before if we left out this immutable annotation. So I hope all this helps you to optimize your lazy columns. Definitely only look into these issues on, on such a deep level if you really have performance issues, if you have a lazy column that runs perfectly fine, then only make sure to use yeah, images with a reasonable size and attach some keys because those are pretty much no brainer things you can do. But when it is about this immutable and stable annotations, um, you rarely need these or they rarely make a difference at all. And if they make a difference, they might not even be necessary. So only if you have real performance issues, look into that, add these annotations and then see how you can save some recompositions with these annotations. And if you feel like you might have more of these issues in your code, which you might not even be aware of, so things where you actively do something wrong, but you don't know that you're doing something wrong because there's nobody who tells you, and it's very likely you're making these mistakes over a long period of time until they finally backfire hard. And that is exactly what I want to help people with with my 10-week Android mentorship program because we will work together one-to-one -one over a period of 10 weeks to eliminate all your technical doubts, to make you feel more confident as an Android developer so that you know after these 10 weeks that the skills you have are really what you need for the industry. If that sounds good to you, then apply using the first link in this video's description. And other than that, I wish you an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye.